Dear students, in my previous session, I had discussed about uh, designing of a, a circular water tank resting on a uh, ground, uh, ground having a flexible base. Now, in this session, I am going to uh, give you a lecture about uh, design of uh, a circular water tank with a rigid base supported on the ground level. So, first of all, what is meant by rigid base? Let us uh, go to the problem. To design a circular tank resting on a firm ground with a fixed base for a capacity of, of 4 lakh 50,000 liters. The depth of the water is limited to 3.8 meters with an additional freeboard of 0.2 meters at the top. Use M25 grade concrete and FE foreign fast steel and dry neat sketch of the design details. So, this is a circular tank resting on a firm ground with fixed base with fixed base that is the difference between the previous problem and the present problem. First data given capacity of the tank given is 4 lakh 50,000 50, liters that dividing that value by 1000 you will get the capacity of the tank in cubic meter as 450 cubic meter. Next the depth of the water is, uh, is restricted to 3.8 meters with the freeboard of 0.2 meters at the top thereby giving a total head of, uh, of the uh, total height of the total depth h of the uh, tank as 4 meters. Material is given again M25 grade concrete and Fe415 steel. Next to determine the permissible stresses as per IS3370. As I told in my previous session, direct internal stress in concrete for M25 grade concrete is 1.3 newtons per mm square and permissible bending compression stress sigma CBC value is restricted to 8.5 MPa. Permissible stress in the steel is restricted to 130 MPa. Design coefficients. Modular ratio M obtained as the ratio of 280 by 3 times of sigma CBC on substituting the values we get the value as around 10.98 and neutral axis coefficient what is meant by neutral axis? Neutral axis is a layer in bending stress distribution where the stress will change from positive to negative or in other words it the nature of the stress will change from compressive to tensile. So, this is a region where the transition of stress takes place from compressive to <coughs> tensile. So, for locating that neutral axis coefficient, we calculate that coefficient k as using the formula as shown in the slide. I am substituting the values of uh, sigma st that is permissible tensile stress in steel and sigma cbc permissible bending compressive stress in the concrete. On substituting these values, we get the value of neutral axis coefficient k as 0 0.408. Next, lever arm coefficient. What is lever arm coefficient? It this is the coefficient which gives us the exact distance between the resultant compressive force and tensile force in the flexural section. So, this is the lever arm coefficient or this using this from using this coefficient we can get the exact lever arm distance between the resultant compressive and tensile force in the flexural section. And this lever arm coefficient j is obtained by substituting the value of neutral x coefficient and the value obtained is 0.861. Next, balance moment coefficient q. What is balance moment capacity q? Yes. First of all, let us see what is meant by balanced section. In the case of a reinforced concrete flexural section, we are having three types of conditions that is balanced section, under reinforced section and over reinforced section. Okay. What is meant by balanced section? In a balanced section, the permissible stresses in both the materials that is concrete and steel reach their uh, uh, permissible values 
at the same time at the same point at the same point in the case of under reinforced suction the permissible stress in the steel will reach earlier than the of concrete whereas in the case of over reinforced suction the permissible stress in the concrete will reach earlier than the tough steel so for locating this balanced moment coefficient kq we calculate it by substituting this formula as given shown in this slide that is 0.5 times of sigma cbc into k into j on substituting of this values we get the balanced moment coefficient q as 1.535 newtons per square millimeter next to calculate the dimensions of the tank as usually let d be the diameter of the tank in meters and h be the depth of the water excluding the freeboard which is 3.8 meters equating the volume expression to the capacity in cubic meter we have this is the expression for a volume of a cylindrical container and this is the capacity of the tank volume on equating this equation with that volume capacity we are getting the diameter of the tank as 12.28 meters which is rounded off to 12.3 meters therefore the internal diameter of the tank is calculated as uh, 12.3 meters next yes calculation of bending moment at the rigid base at the base ring tension and shear force as i told you in my earlier session also because of the rigid base there is a transfer of moment from vertical wall to the base slab so we need to estimate what is the bending moment uh, which is induced at the base of the section so the difference between the flexible and rigid is this is the difference in flexible there is no base moment whereas in rigid base there is a bending moment at the base so we need to estimate this forces next first of all before that we have to calculate the proportion the thickness of the vertical wall for that assuming the thickness of the vertical wall as 40 mm per meter height this is based on the practical requirement this this value is based on the practical guidelines means this for every 1 meter height of the wall we provide the thickness of the vertical wall as on 40 mm so based on this thumb rule we get the vertical wall thickness t as equal to h into 40 that is 4 into 40 which comes to 160 mm or 0.16 meters so this is very very important so after obtaining this fixing the vertical depth then we calculate a ratio known as h squared by dt h squared by dt this is important ratio which comes 8.13 which is taken as around 8 which is taken as 8 next referring to is3370 for the value of h squared dt is equal to 8 we have yes so this is the uh, values given in is3370 now this is the what is known as h squared by dt this term is h squared by dt in the our case the nearest value for our calculated value was 8 so that is the 8 so 8 is the value which we will have to see so we will have to see the entire row we will have to see the entire row and take the maximum coefficient and if you take the maximum coefficient that is the coefficient which is being referred uh, in this particular uh, yeah, in this particular uh, slide so tension so the tension tension force tension in circular ring wall fixed base free top and subjected to triangle loading so 
the water loading on the walls is exactly acting in the triangle shape. So, for, with respect to point 8, we have to search the maximum value in this row. So, the maximum value comes or uh, somewhere near point 0.5. So, this, so, this is the value where which we get maximum coefficient from this particular uh, table. Uh, next. Moments. Moments in circular wall, fixed base, free top and subjected to triangle loading. Again, for the value of uh, h squared by dt, for the value of h squared by dt is equal to 8, we should see the entire row in that we will have to pick up the maximum value, we will have to pick up the maximum value which is the coefficient for calculating the moments in the cylindrical wall. Uh, next, yes, this is to calculate the shear at the base of the cylindrical wall. This gives you table number 11 gives you to calculate the shear at the base of the cylindrical wall at the base of the cylindrical wall. Again, the parameter, main parameter is h squared by dt. That is the parameter h squared by dt. For our value of 8, for our value of 8, you see the entire row, the maximum coefficient is considered for calculating the shear force at the base. So, here they are given three cases here for triangular loading, rectangular, and a diff uh, different this one condition. Since our loading is triangle, we have to multiply by coefficient into W into H squared. So, this is the one what we have to use for calculating the shear force. And similarly, with for calculating movement, the formula given is movement is equal to coefficient into W into H cube, coefficient into W into H cube. And for calculating the tensile force, ring tension, ring tension T is equal to coefficient into W into H into R, W into H into R, where R is the radius of the uh, tank, where R is the radius of the tank. So, using these formulas given in the code book, you will have to compute the design forces for this case. So, this is the difference between the uh, flexible base to rigid base. Where in rigid base, we have to completely rely on the provisions of IS3370 for calculating the design forces in the tank. One by one, let us crack it one by one. Maximum bending moment. Maximum bending moment, the coefficient obtained was minus 0 0.0146 into W into H cube, and this was uh, this value was attained at the base. At the base. So, how to say that? Let us go back to this slide. This is the slide containing the moment. Yeah. So, this is your value 8. So, on this if you go on this one, the maximum value which obtained was minus 0 0.0146, minus 0 0.0146, the, the maximum coefficient is obtained. So, using this coefficient, Yes, minus 0 0.0146, we calculated the moment at the base where W is the unit weight of water and H is the total height of the tank in meters. On calculating this, we get the maximum bending moment at the base as around minus 9.344 kilonewton meter at the base. Next, maximum shear force. Maximum shear force obtained is 0.174 WH squared, where this 0.174 is the coefficient obtained here, this, yes, triangle loading, triangle loading, triangular loading, triangular loading, 
in the triangle loading, the for h square rate of h square bt is equal to 8, the value is 0 0.174. Next. So, coefficient multiplied by w into h square, w into h square. Yes. Coefficient into w into h square, which gives you maximum shear at the base as 17.74 kilo Newton. Next, maximum ring tension. Maximum ring tension is given by the formula coefficient into WH into radius. In this case, I have taken the radius as diameter by 2. That is the modification which I have done for the formula given in the code book to the what I have used in this slide. So, in this slide, in the code book, they have mentioned this as R radius. So, that radius I have changed to d by 2 that is diameter by 2 in this particular slide. Now, let us refer this coefficient for 0.575. So, where is the coefficient? Let us see that. Yes. Ring tension. Yeah. Tension. H capital it is 0.8. So, this is the maximum coefficient obtained in this row at a 0.6h at a distance of what I have at a distance of 0.6h, 0.6h from the top, 0.6h from the top, 0 0.575. So, this is the maximum coefficient obtained there. So, using this coefficient, yes, we have calculated the maximum ring tension at as 141.45 kN acting at 0.6h or 0.6 times of 4, 0.6 times of 4 is 2.4 meter from the top, 2.4 meter from the top. Next. So, this is about the calculation of forces. So, after calculating the forces, we will have to design this one section for the calculated forces as shown below. First is, I want to calculate the reinforcement for the hoop tension, reinforcement for the hoop tension. So, the maximum hoop tension obtained was, yes, maximum hoop tension or ring tension, maximum hoop tension or ring tension, both are same, ring tension or hoop tension. The word comes to same, since so they are synonyms in this particular case, 141.45 kN. So, for this, yeah, the reinforcement required is maximum ring tension divided by sigma st, that is the permissible stress in the steel. I uh, multiplied with this by 1000 to convert kN into Newton. On uh, calculation of this, I am getting the reinforcement of 1088 square mm, 1088 square mm. So, providing 16 millimeter diameters, the spacing required for this reinforcement is coming as around 180 millimeters center to center. This is the reinforcement required for hoop tension. This reinforcement will be of circular in shape. This is a ring, ring this is a <coughs> top of a ring reinforcement, ring reinforcement or hoop tension reinforcement, 180 mm center to center. Mm. Next, wall thickness. Wall thickness required, wall thickness required from hoop stress consideration, from hoop stress consideration is evaluated from the expression, is elevated, evaluated from this expression, yes, from this expression where this is the maximum hoop tension, hoop tension, I converted this into newtons by multiplying with 1000. Yeah, this is a derived expression. This is a derived expression. We have to substitute the values of M, that is the modular ratio, and AST, the calculated reinforcement which are provided for hoop steel, AST, and sigma CT is the permissible tensile stress permissible tensile stress in the concrete. On substituting these values and after simplifying this equation, we are getting the values of T required as 97.95 millimeters. 
the requirement that is thickness of the vertical wall required is 97.95 millimeters but what is the actual provided thickness actually provided thickness is 160 mm actually provided thickness is 160 mm so actually provided thickness is 160 mm is greater than 97.95 the thickness of the vertical wall is safe because this is the t required and t provided t provided is already 160 greater than 97.95 and the thickness of the vertical wall is safe from this criteria so from this criteria the thickness of the wall is safe next good next this one reinforcement for bending moment bending moment for the check for the reinforcement for bending moment we have to do following checks first is we have to check the safety of the depth of the section provided after ascertaining the safety of the depth of the section provided then only we need to calculate the reinforcement after calculating the reinforcement we have to check the reinforcement with the minimum required steel when once the design steel is more than the minimum steel required we will provide the design steel as the reinforcement or if your calculated design steel is lesser than the minimum reinforcement then we have to provide minimum reinforcement as the design steel as a design steel let us go the steps one by one check for the depth required this is a formula in working stress method where we check the depth of the d check depth required d required as a square root of this is a square root of the entire expression this is the square root of entire expression square root of entire expression that is moment divided by q into b moment divided by q into b so moment you know we calculate maximum bending moment this moment is in kilo newton meter to convert kilo newton meter into newton mm we need to multiply this by 10 to the power of 6 we need to multiply this by 10 to the power of 6 by 10 to the power of 6 to convert it into m yes next after calculating this value i am getting the check required as 78 mm the required effective depth for safety section is 78 mm that is the required effective depth for the safety of the section but since the depth of the vertical wall provided is 160 mm 160 mm the effective depth will definitely be greater than 178 mm how definitely you can tell that we need to follow some calculations next effective depth d provided is equal to total depth 160 minus 46 this 46 comprises of two parts one is the clear cover to the reinforcement and half the bar diameter provided and half of the bar diameter provided in this particular case i have considered the diameter of the main reinforcement as 12 mm and clear cover for the reinforcement as 40 mm so by providing a clear cover of 40 mm to the 12 mm diameter bar the effective cover will be 40 plus half the bar diameter that is 40 plus 12 by 2 which comes to 46 so this is the workout behind this value of 46 how this 46 has come here so 46 so 160 minus 46 will give you the value of effective depth as 140 mm and this 114 mm is more than 78 mm then this assures me that the depth required for the bending moment is safe after ascertaining this condition that is the safety of the depth is assured next we need to calculate the reinforcement ast okay what is ast ast is equal to moment that is calculated bending moment divided by sigma st into j into d it has come as sst sst stands for sigma st sigma st so sigma st is uh, uh, 130 mpa as we have found earlier 130 130 into j is the 
Leorum coefficient and d is the effective depth. So, after this is nothing but small d, yes, this is the effective depth small d 114 mm. After substituting the values of uh, Leorum coefficient and uh, d, we are getting this uh, around 732 square millimeter. The reinforcement required is 732 square millimeter providing 12 millimeter diabars providing 12 millimeter diabars spacing required is calculated as around 150 millimeter center to center so this is the reinforcement provided as for the flexure now how this reinforcement is provided is the question how to provide this reinforcement flexure so that reinforcement is provided as shown now, suppose if this is the vertical wall, this is the this is the wall, this reinforcement is provided as I have shown here. Yes, this is how the reinforcement that uh, flexural steel is provided for the wall connecting between vertical wall and the base slab. So, this is the base slab. So, this is the base slab. This is the vertical wall. That reinforcement need to be provided for the distance which I will tell at the, in the drawing, in the actual drawing. So, this is how we are going to produce this steel that is 12 m diameter at 150 millimeters center to center, center to center. Next, vertical steel for hoop reinforcement, outer surface, yes, vertical steel, outer surface. What is meant by outer face and inner face? As I told you, if this is the vertical wall, if this is the vertical wall, the design reinforcement, hoop reinforcement is provided along so this corresponds to design hoop steel reinforcement on the outer face on the outer face also we provide hoop reinforcement even on the outer face also we need to provide hoop reinforcement so this is the hoop reinforcement provided in the outer wall and this hoop reinforcement is provided for the minimum steel, not for the design steel. This hoop reinforcement at the outer wall is provided for the minimum steel, minimum steel requirement. Minimum steel requirement is 384 square millimeter because the minimum steel required is 0.24 percent of the cross section area, of the grass cross section area. So, providing 10 mm bars, the spacing required comes to around 200 millimeters center to center. So, this is the hoop reinforcement provided at the outer surface. The distribution steel for flexural steel at the base, we are going to provide same distribution that is minimum steel. So, distribution steel again 0.24 percent of the grass area. So, this comes to again 10 mm diameter bars at 200 mm center to center. This steel I will explain in detail when I go to the reinforcement sketch what I have shown at the end of this uh, session. Next, yes, base slab reinforcement. Ah, the thickness of the base slab, the thickness of the base slab is kept slightly more than that of the vertical wall, say 180 mm. Why we need to increase from 160 to 180? What is the need for increasing the base slab thickness? The need for increasing the thickness of the base slab is what I explained below. Because we need to, we need to anchor the flexural steel provided in the vertical wall in the base slab. We need to anchor the flexural steel provided for the vertical wall in the base slab. For anchoring this reinforcement in the base slab, 
we need to have more section available here to anchor that reinforcement. Based on this requirement and practical requirement, we definitely the thickness of the base slab must be slightly more than the of the vertical wall. In our case, since the, the depth of the vertical wall is 160 mm, this thickness of the base slab we are providing it as around 180 millimeters. We are providing this equal to say 180 millimeters, 180 millimeters. At the junction of the vertical wall, flexural steel of 12 mm diameter was provided at spacing of 150 mm center center is anchored, is anchored in the base slab with a haunch of 150 mm along with distribution steel of 10 mm diameter bars at 200 mm center center. In the remaining region, 10 mm diameter bars are provided at a spacing of 200 mm center to center in both ways, in both ways. This, this detailing, I will explain it much more detail when I go to the reinforcement sketch which I am going to show at the end of this uh, design, at the end of this design. Check for shear. I should told you the check for shear is done after providing all the uh, necessary reinforcements for flexor or whatever it is. In this case, maximum shear force, maximum shear force at the base as calculated from the earlier slides, it was 17.74 kilometer, 17.74 kilometer. Hmm. Maximum shear stress maximum shear stress obtained as shear force divided by B into D where B is considered as a value equal to 1000 mm where B is a width considered as a value equal to 1000 millimeters and D is the effective depth of the vertical wall, F is the effective depth of the vertical wall on substituting these values we are getting the maximum shear as around 0.177 newtons per square millimeter. After this, we will calculate the percentage of tensile steel provided, percentage of tensile steel provided that is 100 AST by BD, 100 AST by BD, 100 into AST is the flexural steel, amount of flexural steel provided, 100 AST divided by V that is 1000 mm and D is the effective depth that is 114 mm. After providing this value, we are getting this value as around 0 0.642. 100 AST by BD, 100 AST by BD value is obtained as around 0 0.642 and this value we need to check in this uh, table, table 3 that is a permissible shear stress in the concrete. We need to check this value as given in table 3 that is permissible shear stress in the concrete. 100 AST by BD, 100 AST by BD in your case is 0 0.642, 0 0.642, yes, 0 0.642 lies between 0 0.5 and 0 0.75, 0 0.642 lies between 0 0.5 and 0.75. And our grade of concrete is M25. Our grade of concrete is M25. From this value of the concrete of M25, between these two, we are having two values that is 0 0.31 MPA at for a ratio of 0 0.5, 0 0.36 for a value of uh, 0.75. We need to interpolate. We need to do interpolation between these two values. After interpolating, after interpolating for the exact for the value of 100 AST by BD, for the value of 100 AST by BD as 0 0.642, after interpolation, the permissible shear stress obtained as 0 0.34 Newtons per square millimeter. We we'll obtain the shear stress as 0 0.34 Newtons per square millimeter, which is definitely more than the acting shear force, acting shear stress that is. 0.177 means the permissible is more than the acting shear stress. The permissible shear stress is more than the actually acting shear stress of 0 
Newton's first square of mm, hence the suction at the base is safe in shear. So we need to do all the safety checks. We need to do all the safety checks before ensuring the safety of the design. Once after doing all these safety checks, next is finally we have to <coughs> show the reinforcement. We have to show the reinforcement as shown here. Yes. Reinforcement details in circular tank, tank with fixed base. Reinforcement details of a circular tank fixed base. Yes. Yeah. Thickness of the vertical wall is 160 mm. Uh, thickness of the base slab is around 180. Okay. Uh, it's shown as 190, but actually provided is 180 mm. Okay. Next. Yeah. I will shall go one by one. First is flexural steel. That is 12 mm diameter at 150 mm. 12 mm diameter at 150 mm center to center. So this steel starts here, forms a loop and finally that steel will end here. That steel will finally end and is anchored in the base slab. Once again I repeat, the flexural steel what I have shown there for vertical wall, this is the vertical wall, this is the 12 mm diameter bars which comes here, forms a loop, after that the steel finally gets anchored in the base slab what I have shown there. So this is 12 mm diameter at a spacing of 150 mm center to center. This is the main flexural steel. And then the ones which are shown in the dotted, ones which are shown in the dotted lines, that is distribution steel, that is the distribution steel which consists of 10 mm diameter at a spacing of 200 mm center to center. This is about the flexural steel which are provided for the, uh, in, the in the tank. I told about haunch, haunch, haunch of size 150 mm by 150 mm. So this haunch is provided to reduce the stress concentration at the corner, to reduce the stress concentration at the corner because the corners are subject susceptible to stress concentration. So to reduce the stress concentration, we provide this hunt to see that no cracks develops during alternate drying and wetting process. Means when the tank is full empty or when tank is full dry, suddenly for a dry tank if you put water, there will be some volume changes and all this volume changes, if there is no hunch, it may lead to crack formation at the corner because of the stress concentrations. And to remove that concept, we provide this hunch there to see that no cracks developed at the corner. That is the main purpose of providing the hunch. Uh, next. next is design hoop ring for ring tension. This one I have shown the ring, the circular ring with a bar circular ring. These are the design hoop rings. These are the design hoop rings of 16 mm diameter, of 16 mm diameter provided at a spacing of 180 millimeters center to center. This goes all around the tank. This ring, this ring goes all around the tank. This rings. Uh, next is, I have shown the vertical distribution steel of 10 mm at 20 mm center to center. And this is the vertical, yes, this is the vertical steel or distribution steel provided around the hoop ring. This is the vertical steel. And next, one more thing I have shown here, outer hoop ring, outer hoop ring of 10 mm diameter at 200 mm center center. So this is one more outer ring. This is the outer hoop ring of uh, 10 mm diameter spaced at uh, 10 mm diameter spaced at uh, 200 mm center to center. So for this steel, again I am providing vertical distribution all round, all round. So this is the outer hoop ring, this is inner hoop ring, this is the design hoop ring, hoop ring and this is the outer, outer. This is 16, 16 dia and this is 10, 
Yes. And then vertical stays are the nothing but distribution stays provided all around. This is about the reinforcement provided for the ring tension or hoop tension for the entire uh, periphery of the circular tank. So after this, next is we need to provide reinforcement for the base slab. So again for the base slab, we have provided 10 mm diameter bars, uh, this minimum steel spaced at 200 millimeters center to center, spaced at 200 millimeters center to center in two layers, in two layers at both directions, in two layers at both directions. So by providing this detailing, in addition to that, we need to provide a steel which is shown as inclined member, that is the horn steel, that is this is a horn steel which is provided for detailing, which is provided only for the detailing requirement. This is not a design steel. This is not a design steel. This needs to be provided only for the detailing requirement, detailing requirement. So this comes to around 10 mm diameter at 200 mm center to center. So by providing this reinforcement, this is the final reinforcement what we are going to provide for reinforcement for a circular tank with fixed base. Now what I want to tell you about these things is, these code books are freely available in Google, in Google platform. You can download all these uh, uh, code books uh, free of cost, free of cost. And my sincere advice for all of you is, when you see this lecture session, you must have a notebook, you must have a pen, you must have a calculator, and you must have all the code books. And when you are seeing the slide, you must pause the slide every now and then, replay, hear what is being told, make a note of all these things in your notebook. And what are coefficients which I have shown in this, you must again cross verify the coefficients in the code book, now setting that what has been done is there, uh, has been cut or not. You must do all these checks and then only it will be a very meaningful learning from this uh, uh, session which I have given to you. So, thank you one and all for your, uh, for listening to my lecture. Thank you.